It is 5.17 in the morning. We woke up at, our first alarm was at 2.36 in the morning, and we slept in the car. It's the fullest my car's ever been, because my car has not been home in over a year and a half. So we were essentially sitting up, sleeping. It's absolutely miserable. I think we only got two hours of sleep. As you can see, these are the peaks you normally see in Moraine Lake. But we're hiking to a trail, a uh, large valley to some lakes, it's hard to pronounce the name, but we should be able to get up there by sunrise. We made it to the Reflection Lake for sunrise. Just want to go over my settings with you guys so you can see this. First off, I've got Brian in position right here to walk this ridge line, but I've got my shutter at one over 100. I don't want to go lower than that because I don't want him to be blurry as he's walking. And I've got f4.5 to have a solid focus kind of throughout and then I normally don't like using ISO but just for my other settings I had to balance it so I've got that at 250. <laughs> Just pulled out 7200, so 1635 looked great, and you can get all these mountains reflections. But I kind of wanted to get something with some compression, so I'm shooting this at 70 millimeters. Um, if you can see where I'm standing, the reflections come pretty much right to where this grass meets. 70 is a little bit too close. I would have liked more like a 50, but I don't have one that's not a kit lens. So I just got as far as I could while still seeing the whole reflection because I want all of the mountains and all of the reflection in the shot. Just shot, shot sunrise at Reflection Lake and we hiked up a little further. The patterns in the snow are super, super cool and they're making for some cool shots with reflections. And just so you guys know, I do have a polarizer on right now, but I'm actually switching between, so it's variable. So every time you move it, the polarizer shifts and it kind of changes how it affects the light and the glare in your photo. So for some of these, I'm turning it where there's no glare and sometimes with glare. I'll turn it right now so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Like right now, that's a lot of glare and that's not much glare at all. But I actually kind of like that because this mountain peak comes through. How are you feeling? That hike was brutal, man. I so, got a cold coming on, but I'm alright, I'm alive. That's what we like to hear. We're up here getting bangers. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed episode number two of Behind the Lens. This is going over Minnesota Lakes. I'm not sure if that's pronounced correctly, but anyways, I'm gonna go over a few photos for you guys. So for these series, as you guys saw in the last one, I'm probably just gonna edit about two photos per episode just for time's sake. And then throughout the video, I'll put in, and me and Brian will put in little snippets of photos we took throughout the day's adventures and I'll put the settings. If I had any filters on, I'll include those as well. But just for time's sake, I'm just gonna edit two photos per episode and then in addition, another series we're gonna be doing is start to finish tutorials. So further tutorial questions if you have, just leave a comment, shoot me a message, let me know and we can go over it there. As far as this photo goes though, I took this on a 70 to 200 G Master and I had Brian walking across the lake 
and I would have preferred to have been further back, but if I had gone further back, this grass right here would have cut off the top of the peak's reflection, and I really did not like that. So to avoid that, I would have preferred to have shot this with a 50 millimeter, maybe a 55 millimeter. However, I don't have one of those that isn't a kit lens, so I wasn't able to have that luxury. Anyways, I made it work with this 70 millimeter. I'm super stoked with this shot, and I'm just gonna go over a quick Lightroom edits with you guys to get my final image. As usual, I'm gonna go down on highlights, up the shadows, up the whites, down the blacks, and down the contrast. Also, before I forget, remove chromatic aberrations and enable profile corrections. And for the most part, Lightroom's pretty smart. If you guys see right here, I didn't tell it this. Uh, Lightroom kinda just knows I was shooting on a Sony FE mount with a 7200 G Master, as you can see. So if it doesn't know that, I mean, you can just come in here, pick your uh, model, pick your make, your lens, all that crap. But for the most part, Lightroom is very smart with this stuff. So with this base edit, I am pretty happy with it, but the sunrise we got, it was incredible, but it was a little bit weak on color and there weren't any clouds. So I am gonna bump up the, the white balance quite a bit to the warmer side. I really want it's kinda the morning glow to come in through this photo and it wasn't initially. I'm gonna bring up a little bit of magenta to match that so the photo's not too green. Go up a little bit more in white balance. Like that a, a lot. I can probably go up in exposure a little bit, but right there you can see my highlights start to get blown out, so I'll have to drop the highlights, maybe drop the whites, two stops, that looks better. You see before, after with the backslash key. I'm gonna up the vibrance just a little bit, but I'll probably do more of that in the HSL tab. Still a little bit bright, maybe I have to drop the exposure. Yeah, that's probably better up the shadows just so Brian comes through a little bit clearer and then I'm going to up the clarity for re reflection shots <laughs> excuse me reflection shots in lakes I think upping the clarity definitely helps the photo and even sometimes the dehaze I think looks good and I don't normally touch the tone curve as I mentioned in the last video but because Brian is kind of like a pure black I really want to just kind of up that just a little bit so he comes through more and then to negate that, I'm going to drop the mid blacks and kind of just, if I'm going to touch the tone curve, I'll just do kind of like a very minimal S curve and drop the pure whites. And then for the hue, I'm going to drop the blue a little bit more towards aqua, even though there's not many blues in the photo. Let's see if I can drop the luminance maybe to get a little bit more. Yeah, that helps even just a little bit. And I'm definitely going to saturate the oranges, maybe not that much though, and the yellows because I really want that color to come through. And I think honestly for that, pretty happy with that. Maybe put the luminance of the oranges up so they're not too pungent and the yellows. I think that looks really good though. I don't really feel the need to take this into Photoshop. It's got everything I think it needs. And this one grass patch right here, I'm not a big fan of. And the purpose of this photo was kind of for Instagram. I took all my photos horizontal for my prints that I would like to do. But for this, you know, the vertical, I definitely took this for Instagram. So I'm gonna pull up my crop tool and the Instagram crop for vertical photos is four by five. So I can just click that little preset that Lightroom has. And then I just want the grass out of that and then just the reflections and I think that looks pretty awesome so I'm just gonna export that at that as is and that's it for this one guys alright guys so for this image it is Brian up at the top lake on this hike we did up to through Large Valley I think up here is Sentinel Pass but we didn't go that high but just for this you know start as always my kinda base edit and then I kinda just maneuver the photo how I want it after I have that base edit. I took this on my wide angle 1635 and I took it at 25 millimeters. Um, again gonna bring this white balance up probably a good amount but I'm gonna have to bring up the magentas to match it. And probably bring up the exposure a bit but drop the highlights to negate that pretty solid 
And you can see there's some green hints in this lake. So I'm gonna see if we can bring up that saturation. Get a little bit of that. Maybe not too much. But you can definitely see something. And then up here in this little kind of dead grass, there's some yellows. I think the image could use some of that just for color. But now it might look a little too warm, so I'm gonna drop the white balance again. And also, my highlights are all the way down, but since the sky has hints of blue, I can kind of bring that brightness down by dropping the luminance. And I think that gives the, the photo a lot more balance to it. And then I'm going to bring a little vignette in here so I can kind of keep the focus in this general area and not on the outer rims. Where are you? So if you want to get a vignette, to darken the edges, you're going to be going to the left or just the down arrow key as much as you would like. And as I'm doing that, the whole image does get slightly darker. So I'm going to keep that pretty light and then in exchange, probably bring the exposure up two stops and the whites. Maybe drop the shadows two stops. And then up the clarity because the reflections, I really like, oops up not down I really like the uh, the snow reflections right here and I think that, that is just a really cool thing to the image and I could throw this in Photoshop to lighten Brian up but also just to show you guys how to do that in Lightroom that's a little too zoomed in I'm just gonna put a filter just around him Get that old filter out of there. Invert it because I want to edit the inside. I'm just going to up the exposure as many stops as I can where without it looking unnatural. Like right there, you can see this. And this is where Photoshop comes more in handy for selective edits. But just for purposes of this, I'm going to stick in Lightroom. Tighten that up on him. I think we can get away with that pretty well. Maybe tighten it in just a little bit for the outer edge. Also, I'm going to see if we can get the luminance of those yellows up because his hat really pops his hat out. And I think for now, I'm pretty happy with that. As before, there's the after. So I'm just going to export that as is. And I think that's it for this one, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Uh, on the next one, we'll be going to all over Jasper National Park. It's going to be a really hectic day, a really busy day. We hit, I think, like six spots or something like that. So we're going to have a lot of photos through that one. So stay tuned for that one, guys.